Hey, Brandon. Hey, John. How's it going? Good. How are you? Great. Good. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So let's see. We're 2020 now, and you started studying with me in 2018, right, as a senior? Correct. So, uh, before then, I hadn't had any private lessons until... <coughs> So, so all your training was done just in your band program. Correct. Training. Nice. Okay, cool. And then so so give me a little bit of the history. What's happened since we first started working together in 2018? Right after high school graduation, I proceeded to advance into the Marine Corps in general. And an option was the band. I was able to acquire an audition at the end of summer right before shipping out to boot camp and at the end of July. After that, I got shipped out to basic training in San Diego, California from August to November. And after that, Marine Corps combat training in December of 2019. At the beginning of 2020, I studied at the Navy School of Music in Virginia Beach, Virginia, where I studied with Stephanie and Greens as well as a clarinet professor. At the end of my time being there in June, I graduated with a score of a sergeant, more than expected of me as an E3 in the Marine Corps. I graduated with an E5 score. That wow. was for me. And learned a lot musically there, uh, taking a lot with what you and I worked on in the my last year of high school. And now I am per, in my permanent duty station, which is in Quantico, Virginia. And I will be serving and playing along with the Quantico Marine Corps Band up until the year of 2021. Wow, man. That's so great. Correction. Yeah, that is so awesome. And you know what? Thank you for your service to our country. You know, I, I think it's incredible that you're going to be a musical ambassador for our country. And what a better person to have representing us. So thank you very oh. much. Yeah. So I know you wanted to do a little playing today, and we're going to look at what Mozart and Weber. Correct. Okay. So why don't we start with Mozart? Does that sound good? Got it. Yes. So in Mozart, you're doing the second movement, and you're starting in measure... 39 to the end. 39 to the end. Okay. And this is the second movement, and I will be playing this on B flat. On B flat clarinet. Okay, good. Thanks for letting me know. Um, and you're going to skip the two T sections, right? Correct. And there's only one after measure 37. Right. Section is from 76 and picks up again at the end of 83. So I'll be awesome. skipping. There's... Okay. Go ahead. I'll just let you play for a while and then we'll talk about some things. Yeah. <laughs> Ready when you are. Okay. Why don't we just stop there for now? Really beautiful playing, great sound. What I love is that it's super even and that the notes sound in tune with themselves. Bravo. Um, okay, so 
This is the second movement of the Mozart Clarinet Concerto, right? Uh, Kirchel 622 for us, which is very important in the clarinet repertoire because it is said to not only does this typify Mozart's uh, style of concerto writing, right, but it also helps to solidify the clarinet as an orchestral and solo instrument. So it's really important for us. As you probably know, this was written for a different kind of clarinet, right, from back in Mozart's time. And so now we play our French fancy 20th century clarinets, right? Which has its own advantages here and also some disadvantages because we have some different fingerings we have to work with. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, first of all, in the second measure, um, you know, a lot of things can be um, sort of up to our taste, okay, as far as performance practice. And what I mean by that is in the second measure, for example, I would slur everything there instead of articulating the long note. And so forth and so on. Okay. Did you slur the G to the F? The G to the F, yeah. So you're going to repeat those two A's, right? Because as you might remember when you Studied with me in high school. I called repeated notes what? Attention getting notes. Attention getting notes, right? So this A becomes very important. Okay, now I'm over exaggerating a little bit with the time, but would you try that for me once from the beginning? Okay, so um, these attempts you're getting notes. If I was there with you and writing on your part, I, in the first measure, I would write a tenuto over the last note. Okay? And then the downbeat of the second measure, I would write a tenuto with an accent over it. <clears throat> okay? Meaning that the second A is going to be the most important one. Okay? And so it's like as if you're shooting a bow and arrow. Have you ever shot a bow, bow and arrow? Yeah, okay. They're pretty cool, right? Fun to shoot. So as you pull back on the arrow, okay, that kind of sort of mental image. The downbeat becomes really important. The repeated note, the attention getting note, okay? So with that in mind, just go ahead and start this all over again from the beginning, okay? <clears throat> <clears throat> Do you hear the difference? Yes. Yeah. And so for me, what it does is it highlights the line, especially the notes that are getting higher. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit bigger picture with this. Uh, you might know that this movement is what we call in da capo aria format. The da capo aria is a Baroque form that came out of the development of opera. So it's basically a three-part section, right? The first part is the do, fa, la, la, so, fa. That's the A section, okay? And then towards the middle of the movement, we have totally contrasting material, right? That's our B section. And then we come back to the A section, okay? So this is where you're coming back to the A section. So we're tying it all back in together, okay? So, so it's, a, it's a very important part of the structure here. The other thing, bigger picture, is sometimes we try to play things in little segments. Then we start something new. 
Then you again. Okay. And in my estimation of things, there should be a much bigger line, like a soprano singing. Okay. So if we start at that first measure you're starting on, okay. And then we go all the way to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars after that, where you end on the quarter note C. This is our line. And this is where the whole phrase should go to instead of just two, two measures at a time. That to me is the phrase. Instead of two measures, two measures, two measures. All eight bars together, okay? We try that once, thinking of that. Just all eight bars together. It's gonna be an arch. One second. Yeah, no problem. Now that was a big, nice uh, operatic aria phrase to me. Okay, and I'm I'm pretty sure this is the way Mozart intended it to be because remember he wrote lots and lots of operas, right? That was one thing he was really well known for, his money maker, right? Writing opera. Okay. Um, I think I could have added more to the repeated notes. I noticed at the end. Yeah. So remember the tenuto on the last note. Boom. Okay, not accented, but just the energy we want to. Okay. Um, the other thing is, what's happening with the orchestra orchestral accompaniment here? What what is the orchestra doing? Aren't they just holding out notes? <laughs> yeah, they're holding out notes. Okay. There, there's a lot of eighth notes. Da di da di da di. So I think always subdividing because all they have is this, uh, you know, this uh, stagnant line that's just basically two different notes. So that will help you when you come in with your breathing. If you can think, da 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 da. So da da out out in in play. So try thinking that before you start. Yeah, good. Let's do that one more time. Out out in in play play. Beautiful. Okay. So what did you notice that was different there than? What you were doing before? I think I was too focused before on trying to start up and not focusing on focusing on making sure coming in clearly. Yeah, clearly and precisely. So what that does is it gives you the precision. So you're breathing out, you're breathing in, and then you're playing. This is all in tempo, so this becomes one action. Out in play. This is how we sing too, right? Um, ay, 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 ay. I have to take a breath first in tempo. Ay, 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 ay. Right? Same thing when you play. Do, fa, la, la, so, fa. Okay? So always thinking that tempo. 
Uh oh. My screen went blank. Did yours? Mine. No. Very strange. Okay, we're back. <laughs> okay, so now let's go on to the next section. Okay, so remember the bar before is going to be da da di da di da play. Da, di. Go ahead. Lovely sound. Okay, so here's what I'd like you to try, Brandon. The measure before you just came in, will you just play um, eighth note Cs, and then two bars after that you'll play eighth note Ds? I'll do it once. So forth and so on. Let me give that another try. Yeah, sure. Very legato. Do, 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 do. Okay, so in this kind of in this movement, there'll never be a, an opportunity, there'll never be a time where you want to take a <gasps> kind of breath, right? Because if we took a <gasps> do fa la la so fa versus do fa la la so fa, so very gentle type of breathing, right? Okay, with the eight note subdivision in mind now. Go ahead and start at 66. The reason I'm at, I'm sorry, where you just started, you might have a different measure number. There. No, 66. Um, is it okay? So the reason I'm having you start again is because the beginnings of all of these measures have had very hard attacks. Okay. But if you're thinking with this da capo aria, very singy style, that'll never happen. And if you're thinking the tempo, da 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 da. Shh. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, already so much better. So the first two measures, that quarter note on the second bar, you played too short. It didn't give enough time. But you policed yourself, and you fixed it the next two measures. So that was very well done. Now let me ask you, in the one, two, three, four, five, sixth bar, what's your rhythm there? Is it quarter note, um, dotted quarter, eighth? So in the one. Oh, I see. So, so you're playing dotted eighth, sixteenth, dotted quarter, eighth. Is it six measures after 66? Yes. That measure count, count number one is four sixteenth notes, and then a quarter note. And then a dotted um, eighth note and a sixteenth note, but there's a grace note into the yeah, dot. So it's the measure before that. 
Cardinal, Dada Cardinal, eighth. Okay, so I'm not hearing the clarity of that rhythm, but I don't know if you have the same part as I do, but on the next line down in the 2T section, they have the dotted eighth, 16th, dotted quarter, eighth. Do you see that? Yes. So. I might change it up a little bit like that. Okay, just something to consider. But if you're going to play the, the rhythm that's written, you, you just got to make sure it's really precise. Okay. And then in the next bar, don't forget that A leading into the downbeat of the next bar is one of those attention getting notes. Okay. It's so attention getting that he does it three times, right? Fa te la la so la te fa la so fa fa, right? Yes. Okay. Would you start there on uh, the measure before that on the high C? So subdivision. <clears throat> Okay, good. I'm going to get really picky here. But as you notice, we've been playing uh, dotted quarter notes, eighth notes, quarter notes, and then we get to a bar of sixteenths, right? So Mozart, in his composing of this, is speeding up the tempo, right? So don't help Mozart speed up the tempo. He's already doing it just by the rhythm being faster. So these sixteenth notes are getting a little rushed. So don't let the 16th notes rush. Now, if you're subdividing, da -dee, da -dee, they can never rush, right? So if you'll start the same spot one more time on the high C. Da -dee, da -dee. didn't speak a little bit for now. Yeah, no, that's okay. That was much better with the 16s. Okay. So what era would you say that this music is from? Classical era. The classical era. Okay. So if you think of other things from the classical era, for example, architecture. Okay. It was all about symmetry and things being even. Okay. Um, and things being very clear. Musically, this means um, that the lines were super elaborate, very, very long. So you always have to think much bigger picture, especially when you're playing Mozart this way. Okay. All right. So uh, why don't we go now to the ending there? Is that pickups to measure 84? Yes. Do mi fa la do. Okay, got cool. it. So what's what's the hesitation? What were you thinking about? Mm, I was, for some reason, my brain was thinking that something that was too fast or too slow, and I couldn't like internalize my tempo. Huh. So then I had to go back and think of what we were just playing. Okay, cool. Do you have a favorite spot in what you just no, played? No, I can't. Wait, what do you mean? As in a favorite, my own favorite spot? Your own that? favorite spot, yeah. I would say it's the end, like right at the end, the last few measures, but. Okay, well then here's what I want you to do. Go to your favorite spot. 
sing it to yourself in your head, and now start where I want you to start. Where I'm asking you to start. Nice. Okay. So let's try that one more time. So remember, da di da di out in di da di da di. Tell me why you stopped. I felt I rushed those. Yeah. Good. So one t theta two ta theta three ta theta one ta theta three ta theta one t theta three ta theta one. Okay. I think also another thing why I'm hesitating is because the tempo we're kind of singing right now. I think I like to take this more like at forty to like forty four. That'll maybe like fifty ish. Yeah. Um. You know the general tempo is sixty for this. That's what people do. Yeah, I go very dramatic with this and go very slow. But that's yeah. So if you're thinking like 50, go ka, la, la, so, fa. But you want to play between 40 and 42? How about 44? And I go anywhere from 40 to 44. Do mi fa la do, ti te so te la la fa do. Does that sound good? Yes. So, um, okay, that same spot. Much better. Let me ask you a question. That second measure where you repeat the high C, what did you do differently than the first time you played the high C? It was the intent was to drop down the dynamics. Ah, okay. There was also something else that happened there. The high C wasn't accented when you played it the second time. The first time I heard a pretty good accent. So, a couple ways to practice that are slurred a few times. Question. Yes, sir. Do you, would you want it to be accented like that? See? No, I don't think anything should be accented in this movement. Not the kind of accent where you might be thinking of. Okay. Now, if there is any kind of accent, it's weight on the note. Weight on the front end of the note, and then there's going to be a pretty quick decrescendo. But I don't okay. think there's really any places here like that. In there should be weight on those both high C's. No, I think if there's weight on any of them, it should be the first one because you're going to do an echo, right? Is that right? Okay. So if you're going to do an echo, you want to play them the same way, except the dynamic is exponentially different, right? So if you're going to play it, Sorry. Okay, so one thing might be is just to slur it when you play it. Try that once. Will you try it slurred? Slur up to the C, the second C? Yeah, slur up to the C. Mm -hmm. uh, all, yeah, all the C's. Good. 
Very nice. Now, you might want to be a little softer the next time, right? The second time you play. My screen keeps going to sleep. I'm so sorry. Uh, let's see. There we are. Okay. So, two things. Remember that, um, especially in this type of music, forte means for us, of course, it comes from the Latin word that means strong, right? In Spanish, what do we say for forte? Fuerte. Fuerte, right? Strong. Okay. And then we have piano, which to us means soft. Okay. But right now, you're a soloist. It's all about you, right? So I'd like you to think of the fortes strong. And the pianos are going to be more like an aesthetic, a color, an atmosphere. Not like, it has to be super quiet. Okay? It's just a different color. I'm sorry, I have water in my key. But... Uh, see, see, see what that means for you. You try that, okay? And still slur. I think that's a good option. Yeah, great, 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 great. And then, so um, you know, you might want to get even softer. And one way to practice that is to do this. Um, just play the C's the way you want them to. You want them to be. Try that once. Do you hear what I'm doing? Another thing that could add to that is maybe not me not being comfortable enough with this horn since my the, my primary horn is at the workshop at the moment. Absolutely, absolutely. But definitely something I will consider when doing that since yeah something I yeah, I know when you're not comfortable on your equipment I mean anything goes right try that for me once do you do me fala do gorgeous Gorgeous, Brandon. That's the way. Always do it like that. Okay. Now, if you're going to do the echo, then you have a choice to make on the third measure, don't you? 84, 85, 86. Okay. So what do you think? Are you going to keep a piano or are you going to go back to forte? I think I'm going to um, um, start crescendoing slightly on the attention getting note at the A right before 86. Crescendo just a little into the AF, landing on the D, the 32nd note D, giving that weight and crescendoing up to the high D and then going down and then decrescendoing a little bit and then settling yeah. in. Uh, I think that's perfect. And it's natural, right? Especially with music like this, we always want it to be natural. We know that if a line's going to go down, it's naturally going to get a little softer. If it goes up high, especially playing this high ray that we have to play in this measure, it's naturally going to be louder, and then you come down. I think that's perfect thinking. Uh, wonderful. So one more time, same spot. And then please go to the end. <laughs> you want me to start again at the solo or no, that's okay. start on those pickups
Ah, bravo, Brandon. Very, very nice. Okay, so a couple of things in this um, last section. First of all, I know you're not on your horn because it's being repaired now, right? But when you um, are practicing on your horn, make sure that in measure 88 and 89, even though those C's are an octave apart, that they're very well in tune, okay? Because your low C was actually very sharp okay. uh, compared to the, the C above, okay? So just sort of keep that in mind. And then the other thing is, I know these lines are huge, okay? And you're making them longer by playing slower, right? So make sure that you consciously are aware that you're doing that, okay? So that means you might have to tank up with more air in some spots. And where I mean specifically is at the end, at 88, 89, 90, when you play that low G, I, I almost felt like you gave it a staccato ending. Something like that, okay? So really finish that G before you even consider playing the high rate. Okay? So why don't you start same place, pick up to 88. Okay, let's try that again. Fa, la, do, la, fa, la, do. What is that, by the way? What is that outline? Sorry, can you repeat that, please? Yeah, what are those six notes outline? What are they in that order? An arpeggio? Yeah, which arpeggio? An F. Why is F important? Because that is our tonic. Absolutely. So we have to, the low fa has to really speak well because we're coming back to tonic now. Okay. And don't forget your repeated attention getting C. Nice, Brandon. That was a much better ending on the G, right? Maybe just a little more gentle. Uh, I'm talking about the G in 90, downbeat of 90. Okay. And then are you taking a breath there, Brandon, after the G? No, did I? No, but I think you should consider it. And then I think originally I was kind of taking a breath at the really low G. Wait, which G? I'm talking the G, the downbeat of 90. 88, 89, 90. Oh, yes. The, that makes sense. Although okay. I think I took one very, very slightly, but still tried to maintain the. Yeah. I think here you have a little bit of opportunity to play a little more with the time. We know we want the G to finish. You want to start it and you want to finish it, right? And then that D is going to come out accented, isn't it? Because it's much higher than the G, okay? So we want to sort of cover up that accent by bringing out the syncopation instead, okay? Okay? Did you hear what I did there? Because the ray, the, the high D is the and of one, right? One and two and three and fa, do, re, mi, me, fa, okay? So uh, why don't you just start there on the high D? Re, do, te, la, so. Good. 
Good, 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 good. Very good. So that went beautifully. Okay, so maybe when you're practicing this, you should just end that G totally, okay, yes. clear your mind, and then start the high D. Okay? The last thing I want to talk to you about, Brandon, is that at 91, the end of the measure, those last 16th notes, I know you're trying to do something with them. Tell, explain to me in your own words what it is you're trying to do, what your well, goal is there. There's a slur over the four 16th notes, but I want like separated, but I don't want it to be like too separated to like where they're not in like the style and they're completely like right. different. But so in French, we would call this the detaché style, right? Detached, but still legato. Okay. All right. Now, what about time? What are you doing there time-wise? Slowing down a little bit. Okay. So, two things happen here. First of all, the tempo is increased because we have triplets. Triplet note 16th, right? So, coming out of the triplet note 16th, then you have the four 16th notes grouped together. Okay. So, I don't think you can start slowing down and it, be, um, it makes sense until it's a little bit later. Okay. What I mean is, what I hear you doing, and I'm going to over exaggerate, pardon me. Okay, something like that. So it's very clear. And coherent. And then when you get to the trio, you're doing a beautiful job and you're starting on the note above, right? Correct. Which, as you see, is a repeated attention getting note, right? Comes from the end of the bar. Once you start getting the trio going, then fast, okay? Something close to that. Uh, so do this for me. Start at Re Do Te La So. So I think, um, you know, play with the, the length of the articulation. For me, it's a little short, but that's just my own taste, okay? Um, what I do when I'm practicing those, that detaché de style, is I play them super legato first. Just something to think about. Okay, the length of the articulation. All right, now why don't we go to the very end? So one, two, three, four measures from the end, starting on the um, six lit, 16th notes. Um, and I know that's not your horn. I still get that. I feel like you're forcing the G instead of allowing it to happen. Like you're going da -di -da, instead of da -di -da, a release. See if you can feel that G before you start playing it. Yeah, perfect. Good. Keep going. Okay. Good. And Brandon, would you tell me one, two, three from the end? What's your rhythm in that measure? 
What rhythm do you have written? Dotted quarter note and then three eighth notes. Okay. I hear something different each time that you play it. Right? Yes. Something like that, right? Start on the jig in. That was great, though, releasing it and knowing where it was at before you played. Good. Okay, so um, we have to really decide how we're going to play the last pause, right? There's how many? One, two, three, four in a row, right? Four Fs in a row. Okay. So looking at the note before the first F, what, what's the interval there? Between the E and the F? Half step, half step. It's a half step, right? Okay. So we have the tendency when we play half steps to want to play the note above the half step higher than we think. Well, in this case, we can't do that because the Fs are necessarily a poopy note on the clarinet, right? So they're typically going to be flat in pitch. So you want to make sure you don't push it up too high that it's going to sound flat. Okay. And then you have to decide how you want to articulate those last four Fs. I think they all need to be the same way. Now, tempo might be something different, but I think they need to all have the same uh, inflection. Okay. Will you try that starting the 16th note triplet? Yeah, and that might be a place on my part where I would write. Where I would write. Body da four, three, two. Will you try that just in your mind? Do, re, mi, fo, re. And, and play it, I'm sorry. In your mind and play it. <laughs> With the sixth template? No, 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 just starting on the do, re, mi, fa. Or just, just make sure that last note's a half note. Da. Right? Okay. Beautiful. You've sung your aria.